Hi everyone, it's Kim Wiggins from OT. Today I'm going to show you a cool trick that I just learned that really makes using Zoom a little bit easier for our students to be able to participate in our lessons and to make it even more of a fine motor skill. And so what you're gonna do is I'm going to be the presenter and then Kara is going to be my remote student on an laptop and on an iPad. So we're gonna try both things. Okay, so now what we're going to do is as the presenter, I'm going to share my screen. I can choose to use a whiteboard or anything that I have open on my computer. The first thing we're gonna choose is the whiteboard. And I'm going to share my whiteboard. Now, as the presenter, I am going to uh, be able to press the draw button. This bar automatically comes up and I'm gonna press this little squiggly line right here. That makes the drawing and I can uh, choose whatever color. I'm gonna choose black. So I'm gonna be the uh, black crayon or pen. And I'm gonna, this is a touch screen computer, so I'm going to press tic-tac-toe and I'm gonna draw that out. Now Kara from her remote learning because I shared my screen with her, she can move her mouse. And because she did that, see where it says on the top, you're sharing or you're viewing Kim Wiggins screen? Click on where it says view options. And then press annotate. Now she will press draw and choose pink because that's her favorite color. So now I'm going to say, Kara, do you wanna be X's or O's? X's. All right, so I'm gonna go first yeah. and I'm, okay, she's gonna go first. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, job. All right, now I'm going to put the O right here. Then she's gonna do an X. Very good. Now let's say she was actually on the iPad and not on the computer. Could she participate? Absolutely. All she actually has to do is tap on the screen and all of a sudden a little pencil will show up. And this works on, also works on uh, the phones as well. So press the tablet, any app, any Zoom app that you have. So we're gonna press the pen and this person, let's pretend that this person's going to be blue and I'm gonna make it a little thicker. And now this person is gonna participate and be able to draw on also. And as that happens, I can see it on my screen and everybody can see it on their screens. Okay, now what I would have to do if I wanted to stop using the whiteboard, I'd have to stop sharing my screen and all of the iPads and <laughs> Chromebooks to up working. I wanna share my screen again, so I'm gonna hit it down here. This time I'm gonna use my Google Chrome. So anything that's on Google Chrome will be shared with my students. So I'm gonna hit that and press share. And now all the students have the website, which is a matching game. So I have full control of the matching game on my computer. So how are they gonna be able to flip over the cards? They're not going to be able to do that. What they're gonna do is they are going to go to either the pencil or they're going to go up here to the top where it says view options, annotate, they'll have to do it again. And this time they'll use their mouse to draw maybe an X on the card that they want. So Kara, go ahead and draw an X on the card that you want. So it's a little tricky. I know that she wants this one. Ah, it's a match, great job. Now it's gonna be this person's turn with the blue. And so this person's going to draw an X there and an X there. And I know that I can click on this one and this one, not a match. 
The next thing we can do is go to something else like a website like Handwriting Without Tears. So these students are going to have to make sure that they press the eraser button. Kara, do you find the eraser button? Here's the eraser button on the screen here, and I'm gonna have to erase my blue writing. And you're gonna have to go up here to the eraser button and erase all of your things, because now we're gonna do something a little different. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice handwriting skills. So now this person is the blue person. I'm gonna make the uh, pencil a little thinner because this is smaller. And I'm going to draw C's and I'm gonna practice writing C's. And as I'm doing that, I can see as the therapist and the presenter that they are making the letter C. And Kara will be able to do it as well on her Chromebook. Now, if the, her Chromebook was a touch screen, it would be a lot easier than managing the mouse. So now she has to make sure she hits draw and go ahead and draw a couple of C's. Hold down this. Excellent, nice job. So a parent might have to help them if they have a mouse. The other option is to be able to open up a PDF on your, because you're gonna open a PDF on your Google Chrome. Like if I had something in my drive, I can click on this PDF right here. And it's going to show a worksheet that I had on my PDF. These students are going to be able to circle or draw on any type of thing. So if the iPad person wanted to draw on this, I could say, find the word that starts with N, and then they could circle the word that starts with N. Kara, find a word that starts with H on the top line. And circle it. go. You have to use your mouse. Oh, you know why? We forgot to go to view options, annotate, then circle it. There you go. So then we would be able to do that. So you have to remember on the computer or the Chromebook, you always have to go back up to the top and click annotate. I wanted to see something the student wanted to share with me. So I would click stop sharing my screen and the student would be able to share their screen with maybe what they have on Google Chrome and share. And now she's going to play the game Simon and everybody's going to be able to see it. As the therapist, I might be able to point where they need to go and uh, I can actually hit view options, annotate on my screen, and I can say, make sure you hit the red one. And when I write that, she will see that when she presses the buttons so that she can play the game. There we go. Another option that would be especially good for teachers is perhaps the student is sharing their screen and they hit reading A to Z, which is one of their reading websites, and they can actually go to their one of their books and be able to read their book while the teacher is watching them read the book and listening to them reading the book. And the same thing with math or any type of website that we can participate in that way iPad, it's a little trickier to share your screen. So you're going to hit share content and you can choose any one of these things to be able to share, but you're going to have to sign into them. So let's hit Google Drive. I've already signed into my Google Drive. All I had to do was put in my um, email address and then on my Google Drive, I can, maybe the teacher assigned me a worksheet and so I can share my completed assignment. So perhaps I made a vocabulary list. I go to my Google Drive and I can find it and I share that particular document. And now I have my, my vocabulary worksheet and all of the students and the therapist or the teacher can see the completed assignment. Uh, and you know, as the teacher, I can go to view options, annotate, 
and I can say, oh, I really like how you answered this question right here and circle that. And then the student can be able to see that because they won't be able to see you moving your mouse on your screen. The only way they can do that is for you to be able to draw on it. So maybe you even make one of the little circles and then you draw a circle around it so that they can see that. If you stop sharing that and they wanna share something They can else. even choose whiteboard. So on the iPad, they even have that capability of doing that. I mean, it doesn't really matter because if you do it on your screen, you're gonna be able to uh, do it with them there. But if they wanted to start it, they could. So now they could actually, you know, I always go back to tic-tac-toe, but it could be anything or if they wanted to show you a picture or something like that.